anywhere in the universe, you can create it. You can have whatever you need. You don't need to be dependent to come back to Earth, because you have to take some uh, piece of a steak, or you need a piece of aluminium for a component somewhere in the system, or in your, in the, what do you call it, um, in, this, uh, in the craft you fly. In time, the scientists will make the chart and the systems that will come. It's very much that you go to uh, a shop, and you can buy any kind of, uh, what do you call it, uh, materials you need. It'll be changed, it's a huge evolution, it'll create a huge unemployment. But the creation of huge unemployment will bring peace. Because people have more to serve and enjoy the quality of the life which is in the universe. Nobody goes to work nine to five to earn something that he can put in his mouth that the body can survive. Nowhere in the universe anybody works 50 days a week or 98% of their lifetime to have two weeks holidays, to have two weeks rest. This is the misconception, materialistic dependent of man, which has been growing and growing. And now we put an end to it. We've seen people in China have started making cups of life and they do all sorts of things. Use the cups of life, if you make it the right way, to be the storage capacities of life, not for you to drink, and then just carry on. We have shown you small ways, little things on the way in past months and years. But now we bring it all together, that as Elias said yesterday, it's like a jigsaw pieces all there, now it's coming together that you can see the beautiful picture. Then you understand, if you have a virus, what does a virus do? It has more fields it needs to give to be attached and to move. You put it in a container, you create a field container, that it can strip it of the surplus, by, by linking to other magnetic gravitational field of the stronger material. There's no virus anymore. This is how we are handling the situation and the research in Ebola, in Africa. We don't destroy the Ebola, or what they started the test yesterday as preliminary test as Ebola, because it's not very far, but at least it's safer. When is a virus, is energy dependent. All you do, you put a gravitational magnetic material like a CO2, or copper oxide, or other materials which we developed, near to it, that is magnetic field, links to the new material. And by linking to the new material, is energy does not go in or extract from the blood cells, to become thinner, that they pass through the wall of the body, that it causes the bleeding and death. That's all it is, as simple as this. That's why you saw the reduction in gamma rays in Fukushima instantaneously. It wasn't, our, it wasn't that the system took half an hour to uh, measure how much radiation was reduced. It was the man-made systems, which needed half an hour to detect what happened instantaneously. So, in cases of the viruses, like Ebola, like Ebola and AIDS, which now we started full physical test in Africa yesterday, now we drain, or we link the energy of these, what you call viruses, these molecules, with the extra energy, into the link of the materials, which are in the state of plasma, what we call GANS. So, they link to each other quickly. You don't need to go and find it. The process of killing is a habit of man, and that's why you have all the problems. Process of sharing and understanding and facilitating is the behavior of the universe. So, when you produce the GANs in Fukushima or in Ebola or any other condition, you don't destroy the Ebola you facilitate to extract this extra energy to in line with other materials, which is in its wavelength, which is in its strength. If the material does not work on Ebola, it means two things. It's out of tune, it's like what I said, it's on the 99, 
or it's on it's on 98 or it's 110 or 100 but ebola is at 99 so you have to find a material which is at magnetic gravitational field of 99 that you can link up with the fields of ebola and it, you attract it and becomes part of you so that extra energy is not available to extract or produce conditions that the other cells in the body reduce in size you got to understand the viruses in universe are called viruses for one reason they give energy or they extract energy because they needed the center being weak and needs a stronger field very much like the capacitors and the resistors you created as i showed on the layer of nano layers they are like a nuclear materials radiate radiation out if you have viruses with radiate radiation out it is very easy to control because it's easy to start with the hairlines of the silk worm you can get right to the silk in the middle to the worm the viruses which go from in and they take fields from other materials these are not that hard to to what you call control but you have to find a way that you can put a plasma on the way that become the source and detect, what do you call it, uh, disconnects the connection to your material to body. What this means is that you put a system that a battery available to the virus, that the virus takes the material from your battery at a given rate, and in that time it gives you a chance for the body to repair itself. And then you remove it because you put the material, you put the battery there, you can remove it, and in removing it, you remove the virus. Microbes are totally and utterly the product of the atmosphere of this planet. Outside the boundary of this planet, you hardly find microbes which affect the body of man. But in the universe, you have viruses. Viruses are magnetic gravitational field dependent on strength. Let's look at Ebola. Why does Ebola lead to bleeding through the tissues of the blood, cell, blood vessels? Ebola is of the second characteristic. It takes energy from the blood cells that in time they reduce in size that they can pass through the wall of the blood cell. So they penetrate. You go and buy a poison to do this job. There is no difference between what you call uh, the medicine is given, the rat poison is given to the people who have heart valves to thinner the blood, or aspirin, and Ebola. So you reduce the size that it can go through. We know as matter state this technology very well. In washing powders, present washing powders, they use the oil of orange because of its narrowness and its thinness, to be able to pass through the cloth, to take the dirt with itself. That's why you can wash at lower temperatures. In the olden days, you had to cook and cook till you could separate the dirt from the cloth. The same as what you do with um, boiling of the copper wire. Now, with uh, orange, because of its small structure, you pass it through, and you can work on the lower temperature in your washing machines. The same process applies. Now Ebola does two things at the same time. In one sense, it reduces, extracts energy from the red blood cells, or the plasma of the blood. In another sense, as it extracts this, it transfers in a very direct way the energy to the wall of the blood vessels. So, in reducing one, it hits the other one to expand, so that's why it's a rapid death. If you can produce or introduce ganses which can cross the wall, the energy of the body, that they can join the blood circulation system very rapidly, the energy which is extracted from the plasma of the blood 
when I call plasma, not plasma, as we talk in blood plasma, as gravitational magnetic field of the cells of the protein, we call red cells or the white cells, then there is no effect. Then the energy will not come out of the red blood cells to be thinner, that we given to the wall, that it be strengthened. And it opens up, that it leads to bleeding and death. So you create the balance, and in time, the Gans state will be discharged into the liver or into urine and it just comes out. So, you need enough time to take whatever is created out of the body. And this should give us a chance to do it. Would it be done by infusion of blood system, coated with the nanomaterials or Gans materials? We have to see what the trials bring. There is no failure. If it doesn't work, it means we haven't created the right gravitational magnetic component to do the job. Can we use external materials? Possible, we are looking at it. So, from now on, we stop using transistors and resistors and capacitors and batteries. Where we use the same terminology, but in components being made of what you call Gans of materials, plasma of the materials. The work will be so fantastic, the energy transfer will be so quick, the information transfer will be, uh, the present computer systems will be like obsolete, like a dinosaur. But, then you understand the component size will reduce drastically, because one plasma of CO2 carries enough energy to last your lifetime and plus few generations of your great-grandchildren. Because a plasma, by releasing its energy from its center, is staying as an atomic hydrogen, that is part of the water which has been on this planet for thousands and millions of years, has enough energy to be able to stay hydrogen for millions of years. It carries a huge amount of energy in its principle, in its center. The energy you take out of it is a fraction of its lifetime. It's a, a spring which you put in a clock, which never completely unwinds, but it always have energy, because you didn't release it fast enough. Then, you understand, in a very simple way, there is no need to create wars, have energy.